Hey everyone, this video includes some clips and instructions for investigation five. The topic of lesson five is states of matter, and you'll be learning about the differences between heat and temperature and what causes changes of state. First, let's watch the video included in the observing phenomena slide. Suppose you placed a few ice cubes on the kitchen counter and left them there for five minutes. Watch what happens. Yep, you guessed it. Over time, the ice cubes melt and water changes from the solid ice to a liquid state that you can see in the bottom of the video. Is it the same substance that's on the counter after five minutes? Yes, both liquid water and ice are the same substance. They're both made up of water molecules. So what is it that has changed? If you guessed the state or the phase of the matter, you're correct. How could you describe the changes that will take place on the molecular level during the five minutes? In other words, what's happening to those water molecules? Well, they move faster and they break free of the bonds that are holding them locked in place. Let's observe another scenario. In this video, you see water that's a solid here as snow, and also you can see water um, that is changing to a gas in the air. And then as it loses energy, it changes back to a solid little ice crystals. How would you describe the relationship between the different states of water in the video? Remember from the last lesson that Water that is a liquid is water. Water that's a solid is snow or ice. And uh, water that's evaporating or subliming, going directly from solid to a gas, uh, forms water vapor that makes up the steam that we can see in that video clip. How would you describe the particles of water in the snow compared to the particles of water in the vapor? You're right. Water particles are more tightly packed and vibrating compared to particles in the vapor, which are moving quickly and freely. What might cause the water to change from one state to another? In this lesson, we'll learn about changes of state due to changes in temperature or pressure. So the big idea for lesson five is that in a warm room, water droplets form on a can of cold liquid. You've probably noticed that if you put a cold beverage in a can or a glass, Outside in the sun on a warm summer day, you see droplets of water start to form on the outside of the can or the glass. In this lesson, we'll figure out why that happens. We're combining investigations one and two and doing part of each one. So here's the start of investigation one, comparing heat, thermal energy, and temperature. Thermal energy is the total energy of the motion of the atoms and molecules in an object or a sample of matter. The amount of thermal energy in an object is determined in part by how many total particles there are in the object. Remember learning that? Thermal energy is the total amount of energy in an object or substance. Why does the thermal energy of a substance depend on the number of particles while temperature does not? We learned about this before. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the sample. So temperature already takes into account the number of particles and factors that into the number while well, thermal energy is the total energy, so we take the amount of energy of each particle and add that all together. Now, you are going to try this hot hands investigation. You'll need three containers. Each one should be big enough to fit your hand in. A mixing bowl would work really well for this, or three mixing bowls, and you'll wanna label them. You can put the labels right on the containers or on a piece of paper on the counter. Put hot water in container A, Make sure that the temperature doesn't exceed 45 degrees Celsius. Um, you are going to put your hand in it, so make sure it's not so hot that it would burn your hand. Then place an equal amount of room temperature water in container B and the same amount of ice water in container C, so a combination of ice and water. Place your left hand in container A and your right hand in container C. Leave them in the water for 30 seconds. Uh, now, be smart about this. If the water feels too hot or too cold, take your hands out, let the temperature even out a bit, and then try it again. After 30 seconds, take your hands out of both containers A 
and C and put them both in container B at the same time. Describe the sensation that you experienced in your hand. Was it the same as the sensation in your right hand? Pause the video and answer that question on your lab sheet. Then describe the movement of thermal energy into or out of your hands. Remember, thermal energy or heat always travels from a substance at a higher temperature to a lower temperature until they're at equal temperature, which we call, yep, thermal equilibrium. So think about what's warmest in that situation, your hand or the water, and which direction the heat energy would flow. Scientists call thermal energy that transfers from one object to another heat. Remember that? Go ahead and pause the video and answer any remaining questions that go with this hot hands demonstration. Welcome back. Now we're going to look at a few things from investigation two, which is about gaining and losing thermal energy. Have you ever wondered why ice is so slippery or why cold drinks seem to sweat, like we saw in observing phenomena? For this investigation, you'll watch six videos to observe state changes. You will then apply your knowledge of temperature, heat, and thermal energy to develop explanations for the behavior of substances as they go from one state to another. You may want to have access to your vocab terms as you progress through this investigation. Before you do anything else, let's take a quick look at this diagram. It shows us water in all three states. Here's solid, liquid, and gas. The red arrow shows what happens if a substance gains energy as heat and changes to a different state of matter. So for example, a solid that gains energy as heat and changes directly to a gas, notice it skipped the liquid step, we call that sublimation. If gas loses a lot of energy very quickly and changes directly to a solid, we call that deposition. Solid to liquid, you know that one, it's melting. Liquids that lose energy and change to a solid, you know that one too, freezing. And lastly, when a liquid gains energy and changes to a gas, we call that evaporation. If a gas loses energy in the form of heat and changes back to a liquid, we call that condensation. That's what you see on the mirror uh, if you take a really hot shower, that kind of fogging on the glass mirror. So these six videos that you see here are linked in your lab investigation sheet. You'll need to click on the video button at the top of each column to watch the video. And then as you watch, fill out um, the table, answer the questions that go with each video. So you've got a table that looks like this, and you'll click the heading at the top of each column, and then answer the three questions that go with it to view all six videos. When you're done, go ahead and um, finish any remaining questions on your lab sheet, and then hit that blue submit button in Schoology. Good luck.